Hi everyone. In this video, I'll show you how to use my Design Space project for these cute Halloween treat boxes and how to make your own. The project you're going to see will be shared in my Facebook group and there's a link for that in the description right under this video. We're going to start this project in Design Space on my canvas, but before we go there, I wanted to give you a quick look at my Design Space profile page. I've shared over 200 projects, and every day I find something else I want to add. If you're not following me already in Design Space, I hope that you will. And if you'd like to join my Facebook group, you can find the link right here. I'm going to highlight it. You'll see that right click on my mouse doesn't work to copy. So you can highlight it, use Control C and paste it into your browser with Control V. So please, if you're not following me yet, please do so. Let's go to my canvas. Here you can see all the little Halloween treat boxes that I've already made. I'm going to be sharing these in my Facebook group. For some of them, I've used print and cut stickers to add extra embellishments. This one here at the top. And some you can do just plain. If you want to use the extra embellishments or not, that's completely up to you. I would use either Cricut printable vinyl or white cardstock to make these print and cut embellishments. I wanted to show you how you can make your own boxes. It's super simple, so if you want to make some with your own ideas, I'll show you how to do that. We're going to select all. I'm going to group them, and I'm going to hide them on my canvas so I have a clean canvas to work on. We're going to images. I'm going to select image sets and I'm going to search for tags, bags and press enter. And you can see that these sets come up. Tags, bags, boxes and more and tags, bags, boxes and more too. I'm going to select the two version, the second version. And I'm going to get a gable box. Where is the one that, here's one that I want to use and add to canvas. You can see that when it comes onto your canvas, it's really quite small. Let's move that down. So the easiest way to size it is just leave it exactly how it is. Don't remove your score lines or anything. Don't ungroup it. Just leave it how it is. Go to shapes and get a square. Let's say you want to make that box three by three square. We're going to change the size of our square to three inch. And then you're going to grab a corner of this gable box and start dragging it out. Place your three inch square over it and drag it more. Let's see if it fits yet. It's not a three inch square yet. So we'll go some more. That's a little large. So I'm just going to back it up a little. And a little more. There we go. Now this box will be approximately three inch square. We'll just set that aside. We might use it later. I'm going to make this box orange for Halloween. So because you have a score line attached, you don't want to detach it yet. Go to your layers panel, take that box so you can change the color and we'll make it orange, a nice bright orange. That's really fun. So now you're going to take back that square and you're going to bring the size down to make your window in the box. You want to be sure to make it small enough that you have an area around it to support the window 
and also to glue your insert, whether it's acetate or cardstock. You want an area to be able to glue it to the box, to the inside of the box. So make your window small enough to give you support around the edge. So we'll make it just a tiny bit smaller. And that looks pretty well centered. Now that I've got that one, I'm going to duplicate it and center it on this one. And notice that I still have my score lines in place. Duplicate again. And duplicate one more time. And it's completely up to you. We'll duplicate on the layers panel. There we go. And it's completely up to you if you want to cut four windows, one window, two windows, whatever you prefer. So let's go with four windows. So now I'm going to select all of these windows, go to align and align top so that they're all straight. That looks really good. I have all four windows selected and aligned and I'm going to click weld. The reason I click weld is so I can slice in one motion so that I don't have to slice one window at a time. This is the easiest way to do it. So let's go back to the gable box and now I'm going to detach the score lines. I'm going to hide them in my layers panel so we don't see them. Select all together and slice. We'll take away our squares and we'll take away the slice part, select both of these and delete them. We don't need them. We're going to unhide the score line and because we just worked on this gable box, the score lines have moved to the back. So just select the box, right click and send to the back. And now you can see your score lines again. Let's go to images. I'm going to select a pumpkin. And there's lots we can use. I want this one that has some print and cut to it. I'm going to add to canvas. Okay, we'll make that smaller, it's huge. Let's make sure it will fit. Make it just a little bigger. Too big. We want it to touch at the top and bottom so that it welds to the box itself. I'm going to ungroup it and make it a little wider. There we go, that should be okay. Let's bring it back over here. We're going to offset, and I'm going to use 0 0.10 for my offset, and click Apply. We're going to take that offset and move it aside. We'll select the pumpkin again. We're going to do a second offset at 0 0.10 and apply. Select both of these together and flatten. So now you have your print and cut layer to go over the box. This is a little large. We can make it a tiny bit smaller, but you want it to be touching the box itself. We're going to duplicate That looks good. I'll select both of these and duplicate again. And we'll bring them down. That looks pretty good. I'm going to select all four of these. Go to align and align top or align bottom, just so they're even. I'm going to hide my score lines again select all and weld and now we have the box with the cutout 
Let's take our print and cut pattern, bring to the front, and we'll see how that fits. If you want the orange outline to show a bit, you can just size this pumpkin down a little, and that's perfect. Let's duplicate it. Again. I think adding the print and cut layer makes it really cute and duplicate one more and there we go we're going to select our gable box again and send to the back and we're going to unhide our score lines again you want to unhide the score lines so that you can judge the size of the background layer you're going to put inside so I'm going back to shapes again select a square again I'm going to make it very black We'll put it here and we'll just drag it out. You want to make sure it overlaps the window so that you have enough room to use your adhesive. I'm going to duplicate that one. And place it. Duplicate again, we'll place it, and duplicate one more, and we'll place it. We'll send to the back, send to the back, send to the back, and send to the back. And that's how easy it is to do it. Now all you have left to do Select the gable box, hold down your shift key, and we'll go find those score line. There it is, and attach. Now you want to move this backwards, send backwards, send backwards. You're having to do it a few times to move all your print and cut forward, send backwards. And there we go. And that's how easy it is to make these cute treat boxes. I think they're really fun. I'm going to be making this one out of the craft board that was included in the Fall is in the Air mystery box. Let's go ahead and click make it. On mat and continue. You can see my print and cut for my embellishments my black layer for the inserts and my cardstock layer. I've made this box quite large for the demo so I'm going to cancel because I want it to fit on my 12 by 12. I'm going to select all and group it and then I'm just going to drag it down smaller. I'm going to make it 11.5 so it will fit on my craft board. I will ungroup it, click make it again, on mat again, continue. Once again, you see the print and cut, the black inserts, and the cutout for the craft board, and now it will fit on my 12 by 12 sheet. I'm going to click continue. Go to Browse All Materials, search for Craft Board, and I see Foil Craft Board Holographic. I don't see the Metallic Craft Board listed, so I'll choose this Foil Craft Board, and done. I'm using a Maker 3, so it's showing me to load my double scoring wheel. If you don't have the double, you can choose Edit Tools. You can select the single or the regular scoring stylus. I'm going to switch to the single and click Apply. And you see that it switches in your instructions. So I'm going to get all set up with my overhead camera. And I'll show you how to cut and assemble these treat boxes. And we're ready to cut and assemble these treat boxes. 
You can see that I've doubled the print and cut because I'm going to be making two at one time. It takes a little while for the adhesive to dry on this cap craft board. So I'll cut out two, get one done a little bit in advance so I can show you how to assemble. I love this brayer, it's so handy. These are the two that I made as demos, my Frankenstein. This is a little bag. I have to add the handles. And I made this little orange and black one. And both are made with the metallic craft board from the mystery box. Follows in the air. I think they're so cute. I love the shiny. And um, I have my single scoring wheel ready. It's number zero 01 for the single score. And I added a note to the beginning of the video because I prefer to cut a metallic craft board down, good side down. I wanted to mirror all my layers. I forgot to say it in the video, so I added a note and I'm mentioning it now. If you're going to score good side down, you want to mirror your layers. If you forget to mirror, just cut with the metallic good side up. So I'm going to start cutting. During this process, I'm going to mute my mic. The, my audio system is close to my machine and it comes across very loud. I've mentioned this in videos before. So I'm going to mute it while I cut and then I'll be back to assemble. Okay, so I'm all finished cutting. I'm going to get this one prepared and set aside so the adhesive can dry. And then we'll continue and I'll show you how to fold and assemble this project. And we're ready to assemble our little treat box. The first thing you're going to do is fold your score lines. There's lots of little score lines to fold. On this one, in between the cutouts, you want to support the back of it as you're folding it so that it folds straight. If you just try to fold it without supporting it, you might bend it. So hold the back of it and fold it.
fold off the bottom. I love these little boxes. It's so fun to use them and you can keep them exactly how they are or you can dress them up, embellish them. Put windows in them, add cutouts if you like. Here's another one we want to fold. There it is. And another one on the top. There we go. So we have everything folded. We'll just turn it over. And we're going to add our inside layer, whether you're using cardstock or just acetate or nothing at all, it's up to you. I put the adhesive on the box rather than on the layer that I'm adding, just to make sure that I don't put the adhesive in the wrong place. This way I know that the adhesive is going to be covered when I add this layer. Just around the window and I put a little on the pumpkin and add my cardstock. It's so simple to put these together. I sound like I'm losing my voice sometimes. I have my air conditioning on and the air is so dry. There we go. Whoops. And the last one. Going to do and that should be good and we'll flip it over and we're going to add our embellishments and I don't know if you can see this but my printing cut was off I reinstalled my design space on my Mac and I didn't think to recalibrate my print and cut, which you probably should do if you remove your design space and reinstall it. So they're a little off, but these are just demos. I won't be gifting them, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just go ahead and finish this video. So these are going to go on. In this case, I won't put the adhesive right on the pumpkin. I'll put it on my embellishment. Just add it there. That looks good. Second one. Aren't they cute? I think these are adorable. I didn't have orange in the metallic craft board, so I used this bright gold. I think it's still really cute with the black background and the last pumpkin. Oops, there. There we go. And now we're just going to fold and assemble the box. So this is one that I did in advance and let it dry. And I use clips to hold it in place. These are my sewing clips. They're called Wonder Clips. And they are textured. So when I did that on this box, I found that I dented the foil a bit, the metallic a bit. So this time I just folded a piece of cardstock over it so I didn't get any dents on it. So this one is ready to finish. 
before we finish it, we're just going to do this. Here's your tab that you need to fold over. We'll add some adhesive to it. I'm going to hold it down and bring this side over flat. Make sure it lines up. Everything is straight. There we go. And I'm going to cover it in my cardstock again. Hold it in place. And I'm going to clip it and let it dry. If you don't have these clips, that's perfectly fine. You could try a, a paper clip or just put some weight on it instead. Anything like that should work. And this one needs to dry. This one is ready. So all we need to do is fold the bottom. So I'm just going to bring it back in shape again. Going to fold the bottom so we need to tuck in that little tab. There we go. Tuck in this one. And then fold this over and tuck it in. And our bottom is sealed. And then we have the gable at the top. We're going to fold this out a bit, fold this one out a bit, and we can bring them together and tuck them in the little cutouts on the side. And there we go. Isn't that cute? I think it's adorable. I love adding the extra print and cut to give it more color, make it more fun. And this metallic craft board is gorgeous. The boxes are nice and solid. They don't feel like they're going to fall apart. I think they're absolutely terrific. I'll let this one dry and I'll finish it up. And I'll be sharing the video and the project file, the design space project link for the boxes that I've already made. I hope that whether you use those boxes or you make your own, I hope that you'll share photos in the Facebook group. I'd love to see how they turn out. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.